Milima came back home after playing and was very hungry. Mom, may I eat some sweets? I have arranged some jars containing different numbers of sweets. You can choose any three jars and have all the sweets in them. But I have one condition. The three jars you choose should all be in a straight line. Can you help Nilima identify all the groups of three jars that lie on a straight line? Yes! Let us draw a straight line with help of a ruler and see how many groups of three jars that lay on a straight line. How many groups did you find? There are eight groups of three, three jars which, which lie on a straight line. Three rows, three columns and two diagonals. Can you now help Nilima choose the group of three jars which will give her the most number of sweets? Yes! How many sweets will she get? The first three groups of jars have 8 plus 3 plus 4 is equal to 15 sweets. The second three groups of jars have 1 plus 5 plus 9 is equal to 15 sweets. The third three groups of jars have 6 plus 7 plus 2 is equal to 15 sweets. The fourth three groups of jars have 6 plus 5 plus 4 is equal to 15 sweets. The fifth three groups of jars have 8 plus 5 plus 2 is equal to 15 sweets. The sixth three groups of jars have 8 plus 1 plus 6 is equal to 15 sweets. The seventh three groups of jars have 3 plus 5 plus 7 is equal to 15 sweets. The eighth three groups of jars have 4 plus 9 plus 2 is equal to 15 sweets. So, Nilima will get 15 sweets. If Nilima's mother had allowed her to pick only two jars, which lie on a straight line. Could Nilima have got more sweets than with three jars? Yes! What is the maximum number of sweets Nilima could get by choosing two jars that lie on a straight line? Seventeen sweets if she chooses jars containing nine and eight. Mom, have you knowingly arranged the jars so that if I choose any of the lines from this, but I will get the same number of sweets. You are right, Nilima. My arrangement is no coincidence. It is based on Bhadra Ganitam, the mathematics of magic squares, in which Indians have a rich tradition of more than 2000 years. I do want to learn how to make a magic square. Okay, I will show you one of the ways explained by Narayan Pandita in his work Ganita Komudi, which was written more than 700 years ago. But before we build the magic square, I will have to explain some words to you. Okay, mom. Now tell me, can I think of my arrangement of sweets in the various jars like this? Yes, mom. What shape does the outer boundary of this arrangement remind you of? Square shape. Now you know why it is called a magic square. The inner compartments of this square are called cells, koshta. Cells? The cells which lie along the same horizontal, sleeping line from a row, top row, middle row, bottom row. Hmm, three rows. The cells which lie along the same vertical standing line form a column. Left column, middle column and right column. Three columns. 
The cells which lie along the same slanting line with joints to opposite corners of the outer square form a diagonal Shruti. Two diagonals! In a magic square, the sum of numbers in the cells in any row, column or diagonal is the same. Observe the numbers in this magic square. What do you see? No number is repeated. All successive numbers from 1 to 9 have been used. Now let us follow the method given by Narayan Pandit to make our magic square. 13 different steps are there to make a magic square. Okay, Mom. In step 1, draw a square with 9 cells as shown below. And write the first term, that is, 1 in the top row and center column or the cell in the north direction. In step 2, to place the next number, go in a northeast direction. Oh, we ended up outside the square, above the right column. In step 3, if this happens, we roll the number back into the square from below the right column. In step 4, again, go northeast to write the next number. Oh, now 3 is again outside the square to the right of the middle row. In step 5, this 3 will roll back into the square from the left of the middle row. In step 6, again move northeast. Uh oh, this time we are blocked because that cell already has the digit 1. If we get blocked like this, then we go and fill the cell in the south instead of the cell in the northeast. So, 4 goes in the cell below 3. Step 7. Again move in the northeast direction and fill 5 and 6. Step 8. From 6, the next northeast step will take us above and to the right of the square. So, we roll back to below and to the left. We could also roll back to the left first and then below. Step 9. But, this cell is blocked already by 4. So, as we did in step 6, we go to the cell in the south instead and put 7 there. Step 10. From 7, again, Take a northeast step to end up to the right of the top row. Step 11. The 8 rolls back into the square from the left of the top row. Step 12. Again move northeast. The digit 9 will appear above the middle column. Step 13. Roll the 9 back into the square from the bottom of the middle column. There. Our magic square is ready with the magic sum 15. Mom, now I got the idea how to make magic square. Nelima was very excited to learn how to make a magic square. But she also had many questions. Mom, can I make this square with numbers other than 1 to 9 also? Why don't you choose any number you like as the starting number and see what happens. Okay, Mom. Start with your birth date instead of 1 and try to fill the square with successive numbers after that. Add the numbers in each row, column and diagonal. Did you get a magic square? If yes, what was the magic sum? The magic sum for the below squares is given, but some numbers in the square are missing. Find the missing numbers.